Dave Anderson here with the Fisherman Magazine. It's June 1st. These are your headlines. First up, just a reminder, the new slot limit for striped bass, 28 to 31 inches, is now official in every New England state. While we're on the subject of striped bass, we've been hearing about some trophy class fish showing up in Boston Harbor this week. And lastly, some big bluefish showed up at the Cape. Stay tuned for all that and more on this week's New England Fishing Forecast. The Fishing News is sponsored by these fine partners. Before we begin, we've got a couple news items to cover, and the first one is just a deeper reminder on that striped bass slot limit. Um, if you've been living under a rock and you haven't heard, ASMFC voted to change the rules back in early May, and they became official across all of New England as of this past weekend. So now it's one fish per angler at 28 to less than 31 inches. I know that's a pretty small slice of the pie, but those are the rules, and they're going to stay that way at least until late October, so you're going to have to get used to that for now, and we'll see what the future holds. I just want to make sure you guys were informed and didn't make a mistake. Second thing is a charitable fishing tournament that's being run in Buzzards Bay this week. It's called Fishing for the Mission 22 Spring Fling. This tournament is a sea bass only tournament. There are many different ways to enter, uh, or many different ways to support their cause, I should say. So you can sign up as an adult, you can sign up as a youth. Uh, there are also a whole bunch of different Calcuttas. There are lots of different prizes. The biggest sea bass for the weekend uh, earns two grand. That's a pretty good prize. Um, and there's a bunch of other daily prizes, and of course the Calcuttas. Um, this tournament is in support of a charity called Mission 22. And Mission 22 puts all the money that they raise <clears throat> excuse me, behind uh, supporting veterans and their families, veterans that are dealing with depression, PTSD, or other mental health issues. Uh, I was looking at their website earlier, I found a pretty sobering fact, and that is, since 9-11, there have been a little more than 7,000 U.S. soldiers killed in combat. During that same 22-year span, there have been more than 120,000 veteran suicides. Uh, I know that's pretty heavy subject matter for a fishing report, but I think it really illustrates how valuable this, this charity is and how good you can feel about helping to support them. So all the proceeds from this tournament are going to go to that charity. And, uh, you know, great time, great cause, and uh, you can still sign up. You've got to sign up by midnight tonight. Uh, so you can do that either online at fishingforthemission22.org or... You can head over to Quahog Republic in Wareham. They're having a party there from 1 to 7 today. And um, you can kind of hang out with some of the other anglers. You can sign up. You can have a nice meal. Um, and you can kick things off right. So check them out and uh, you know, get, in on, get in on a good cause and maybe win yourself some money as well. Last thing, of course, is the giveaway, which is still ongoing. Um, starting to get a pretty steady stream of entries now, which is great. Um, and if you're not familiar with how this whole thing works, uh, it's pretty simple. It's a, you know, basically you're trying to impress me. I'm, it's a photo contest. I'm going to pick my favorites. Um, we've been doing this for over a year now. And um, I'm going to give away a mini darter that I made to the first prize winner. I'm also going to have some no live bait needed paddle tails. And I'm also going to have some stuff from Game On Lures, maker of the Exo Jig. Uh, so get those. Entries into me at danderson at thefisherman.com. Just put contest or giveaway in the subject line, or you can text them to the number on the screen. The only rules are that it's a recent catch and that it shows you in the photo. Other than that, it doesn't matter if it's freshwater, saltwater, offshore, inshore, surf, kayak, paddleboard, whatever. Uh, send them in to me, and uh, we're going to run this one till July 26th, and then we'll pick a new winner, and maybe we'll start another one after that. <laughs> Massachusetts, um, the striped bass fishing has really started to come to life uh, on the North Shore and even up into Maine and New Hampshire. I've heard about fishing to the mid 40 inch class as far north as Portland, Maine at this point. So New England is loaded with striped bass right now and a lot of really nice fish are being caught. Of course those fish are all above the slot and have to be released but great fishing right now. So uh, for a little bit more on what's going on in the Plum Island area, let's toss it over now to James Jukes. Well, 
The report this week is still pretty good. Things did slow up over the weekend. Uh, I think it had a, to do with these uh, smaller tides we had up here on the North Shore. Still catch plenty of fish. Uh, not as big as I would have liked this week, but hey, what are you going to do? I had fish to 35 inches. One of my buddies had one that was 38 inches. Uh, but I just getting off the water and had a tremendous surface feed all to myself. Nobody else around. Fabulous. Uh, lots of guys still catching fish up in Lawrence. Plenty down at the mouth of the river. Over in Gloucester, they're doing well too. Uh, they're getting plenty of max about a mile and a half, two miles out. Uh, the boat guys have uh, been doing well with the max, so. Uh, freshwater guys. Sorry, I'm just a little distracted. <laughs> Looking for that surface feed to pop back up. Freshwater guys are still cooking along. I saw a couple of nice pike taken this week. Uh, some big carp at night. And uh, I saw a guy had this catfish that was big white catfish. It, it was it was trophy class. Anybody wants to get in the Merrimack and do some serious fishing, that's a it's a really nice fishery. Uh, as far as everything else. Everything's good in the striper world. Uh, catch and release only, guys. Please. We are in trouble, whether you believe it or not. Anyways, just completely sitting in the water here, enjoying this morning. It was awesome. I started around 2 o'clock. Just about time to go to work. Hope everybody else is having some fun on the water, but the fishing is still good, so keep up the good work. Get out there. Oh, shit. And uh, catch them up. Make sure you get by Surfland or any of your local tackle shops. They would love your business right now. All right, I'm rambling on. Sorry, Dave. <laughs> Get out and get fishing. Heading out of the North Shore and into Boston proper, Boston Harbor has seen a pretty good push of larger fish. Uh, I've seen some nice fish taken from the surf, and I've seen some nice fish taken from the boat. Uh, day and night, a lot of these bigger fish are either hanging on deep ledges or they're relating to bunker schools. So uh, there's a lot of different ways, of course, you can target these fish. Probably the most popular that are happening right now are chunking, fishing live bunker, uh, fishing flutter spoons or throwing big top water plugs. Those are all working. They're all getting some really nice fish. And, uh, you know, it's really good to see uh, a nice contingent of these larger fish moving into the Boston area. Getting out of Boston, we are still hearing about some flounder action in Situate Harbor. It's not as good as it's been historically, but still very good. Then jumping down to Plymouth and all the way out to the canal, that striped bass bite that's been going on for the last couple weeks continues. Seeing fish up into the mid 40 inch class in there. Guys are doing it from the surf and the boat. Some of those offshore ledges are holding fish. And then you know, all these little inlets like the North and South River um, and any one of these other ones you can find along the way, they're all holding fish. A lot of daytime action in there still too. Guys are doing like metal lips at first and last light, throwing spooks and topwaters during the day and uh, finding a lot of a lot of solid fish. And like I, like I said before, a wide range of sizes uh, represented from like 20 inches to 45 inches. So uh, good fishing in that area for striped bass. Jumping over the canal onto the north side of the Cape, same deal. A lot of striped bass along those beaches. Um, pushes the fish going along Sandy Neck. Pretty good contingent of fish outside of Barnstable Harbor and inside the harbor as well. And then, you know, all the way out past you know, out past East Ham, they're, they're finding fish on that side of the Cape now. And we are starting to see some fish populating the, um, the outer beaches now, too. So striped bass fishing on the Cape is really starting to come to life at this point. Uh, going out of Sisuit Harbor, you're going to find good uh, flounder action. I heard from Jason Colby that the fish were getting a little bit bigger this week. So you got Little Sister and you got Gray Dolphin. Both of those guys are on that flounder bite. You can give them a call to get in on that action. 
when you come around the bottom of the cape, kind of get past Monomoy, you're going to start getting into more bluefish action. Uh, some of the bigger blues are showing up there. These fish are in the like 10 to 14 pound range for the most part. A lot of those fish are showing up on the vineyard as well. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, so a lot of bluefish moving into that area right now. A lot of bait in the area as well. And good numbers of striped bass. Some, some bass around Monomoy now. Some fish going up into all these little inlets that go along that shore from like Wakoit to uh, Nobska. And uh, you're going to find bluefish mixed in with them as well all, all throughout that area. Getting a few sea bass reports now from some of those deeper holes off of uh, that same shoreline. And some more of that happening out south of the vineyard, kind of over toward Nomans, and then all along the Elizabeths as well, and up into Buzzards Bay for that matter. Uh, in Buzzards Bay itself, striped bass, still probably the number one target. Definitely tapered off a little bit more this week. Um, I mean, probably the best guess is that a lot of those fish that were sort of backed up in the neck of the canal went through during this last set of blitzes. Uh, speaking of canal blitzes, the canal slowed down a little bit this week. Um, but, you know, those, that last run of blitzes attracted a lot of attention, including uh, <laughs> local sports legend and uh, former Patriot Teddy Bruschi. Look at this. Um, he was down there. That's like a fish it's at least pushing 40 pounds. That's a nice fish. Um, so very interesting to see, you know, just how far-reaching these canal blitzes have become. For a little bit more on what's going on in the canal, let's toss it over now to East End Eddie. Good morning, Dave. We're still catching fish in the canal, but I'd probably have to downgrade situation from terrific to uh, good. Uh, guys are catching fish, but not as many guys and not as many fish. But uh, there's still bait in the canal to keep some predators here. I caught a bluefish the other day. Um, but uh, there's, I haven't seen mackerel in a while, but there's been a lot of squid, silver sides, and bunker. Um, and uh, the other day, uh, there was a four-hour bite west of the uh, Vaughan Bridge that Mike Derrick uh, from Blackstone got into. Uh, Mike's a great guy. He caught eight fish uh, over slot. Two of them were uh, mid-20 pounders, and one was over 30 pounds. Uh, Mike caught them on his uh, favorite lure, his uh, Green Mac Savage that he always uh, uses quite a bit. And uh, I've, I've fished next to Mike for years. And uh, it's funny, uh, a few years ago, he, he used to, whenever he took, took a lot of fish for the freezer, Mike would fillet it and he'd cut open the belly to see what the fish had been eating. So one time he cut up this, uh, this striped bass and he found a rock in there about the size of half of your fist. So he sent me a picture of it next to a spoon for, uh, to show how big it was. and. Uh, and I use that, I actually use that in my seminar because people ask me, you know, I, I tell them it's uh, aptly called a rockfish because they open their mouth and scoop up everything on the bottom, clams, mussels, and rocks. Uh, so, uh, and then Tim Hollywood Petraka caught a 45 inch the other day on a white guppy pencil, one of my favorite boys. And that is the eighth fish that, that Hollywood has caught that's over 40 inches this season. So. He continues to do very well. And Rob Stork caught a bunch over slot the other day uh, using a uh, Hogan, uh, a Hoagie uh, charter, um, charter grade white uh, glider. That's a mouthful. And uh, he caught a lot of, it's a, it's a good lure. He caught a lot of fish on it, including a 43 inch. And I was fishing next to a guy the other day, a nice guy, Rick Eaton from Lakeville. And he was using a Green Max Savage, and he caught a 43-inch. I've never seen anybody happier in my life. He, uh, it was his personal best. And, uh, you know, he just was so thrilled. It's nice to see somebody get that, that excited over a fish. Um, I don't know if you've seen, but uh, Teddy Bruschi, the great uh, linebacker for the Patriots, the hard-hitting linebacker, has become a canal rat. There was a photo of him he posted on social media. Uh, holding a huge fish. I think it was probably about 40 pounds. So congratulations to him. And uh, so uh, this weekend, uh, Saturday, is another full moon. So that'll bring us some breaking tides and hopefully some fish and we'll, uh, things will start to produce uh, even better again. So um, my tip of the week is when you're packing your canal bike for your fishing excursion, uh, make sure that your stuff, there's nothing in there that will pop out and, and go in between the spokes of your bike. So for instance, a drawstring on a sweatshirt or on a, a hooded uh, a raincoat, you want to make sure that stuff's 
packed in tightly so if you hit a bump the string doesn't go in between the spokes and cause a bad accident for you. Uh, the rocks in the canal are fun to fish off but you don't want to land on them. So until, uh, until next time, keep your hook sharp and catch a big one. Subscribe to the Fisherman Magazine today and compete in the Dream Boat Fishing Challenge. It's the Fisherman subscriber only season long region wide multi species fishing competition, the Winner Steiger Craft, and many more prizes. Subscribe, fish, win. Exit in the canal, back out into Buzzards Bay. Um, good sea bass action in Buzzards Bay, as we sort of touched on a little bit on all some of those deeper ledges. Good por porgy or scup, as you probably prefer to call them in Massachusetts. Action along there as well. And then been hearing about some pretty good striped bass, especially as you get you know further from the canal. There's pushes of fish coming through, and some big fish have been taken, especially by surf fishermen. So uh, there's some nice bass to be had along that stretch, and um, you know you just got to find your way in there and make it happen. Uh, we don't have any inland reports this week. Roy and uh, Steve are both busy, but uh, we'll check back in with them next week, and that's what I have for you guys in Massachusetts. Rhode Island is still popping hard. Uh, fishing is just really good in Rhode Island waters right now. Uh, we have several fronts of striped bass moving through um, or are available to us. We've got fish up in Mount Hope Bay, we've got fish in Narragansett Bay, and then we've got waves of fish that are coming all like coming up into the bay that are setting up on the reefs. There's just a lot of striped bass fishing going on. Uh, for what's going on in the eastern half of the state, let's toss it over now to TJ Kopecki. Thanks, Steve. Hey guys, welcome back. Uh, got a quick report for you from the uh, East Bay area, uh, Mount Hope Bay, up into southeastern Mass there. Uh, uh, we've been finding that uh, a lot of the bait uh, has been hanging low in the bottom out in the middle of Mount Hope Bay. Uh, just making it a little harder to catch the fish and uh, snag some bait. Um, guys uh, that are chunking out there, um, we're doing well. Um, lots of bluefish have moved in up in the rivers, the Coles River, the Lees River. Uh, up into the Kikimuit River. Um, we've seen lots and lots of bluefish. Uh, and they're not just the big ones. They're the uh, bluefish from 22 to 26 inches. Um, I guess you would call them the schoolie size blues. Uh, but they are mixed in with a lot of schoolie stripers that are around too. But there, there are some big bass out there. Don't get me wrong. Um, lots of reports of some bass up to 40 and 42 inches being taken up inside of the Taunton River. Um, and uh, I got a report from the guys at Bloodline Kayak Adventures this weekend again. Uh, they sent me a text saying they're doing well up inside of the Coles River uh, and in the Lees River with bass and blues. Um, I'm also still seeing bait all the way up to Dighton almost uh, in the Taunton River. So uh, there's still a lot of fish up in there. If you're fishing up in there, uh, contact them and uh, they can get you on some fish. Um, Warren Barrington bridges have been really good still. Uh, lots of scup moving in in Maho Bay. Uh, you got a lot of stuff you can catch. Um, I haven't heard any fluke reports. I did try when I was out there. Uh, we just got inundated by uh, sea robins, which is typical. Uh, so uh, this coming week, I, I really think the fluke are going to move in. And we should have some good opportunities up in those uh, ocean running rivers like the Sakana River uh, out towards... Uh, the Newport Bridge, uh, that way, uh, Jamestown. I, I think there's going to be some good fluking going on. So uh, until next week, I'll catch you later, guys. Tight lines. Now, in Mount Hope Bay, still a, lot of, still a lot of big bass, but it's not quite like it has been over these last few years. We have more smaller fish in the bay this year, which is, I guess some might call it a curse, but I think it's a blessing. Um, you're going to find some keeper-sized fish, and some of these fish will take down a live bunker still. Um, you know, some of these 32, not 32, some of these 30 to 31 inch fish have the, you know, they have the ability to take down, especially a smaller bunker. So you can catch those that way. Um, but you're also seeing a lot of smaller bait inside Mount Hope Bay, so you can get them on small spooks, small swimmers, uh, soft plastics. They'll also hit a flutter spoon, so um, there's a wide range of sizes available to striper fishermen inside Mount Hope Bay. Also, some really big bluefish, like 10 to 15 pound bluefish in there. So. Uh, no, a lot of exciting stuff going on in Mount Hope as we 
kind of go under the uh, Mount Hope Bridge and start getting up into Narragansett Bay proper. It's really the same story. A lot of big bass, a lot of big bluefish, tons of bunker, some weak fish up inside the Kikamuit, some weak fish around in Apanon Cove. Um, just really good fishing going on over there. For more on what's going on in Narragansett Bay, let's toss it over now to Coral Eye Yellow from Sarah Star Charters. Uh, this season has been absolutely phenomenal. I mean, there's just so much activity going on. It's like hard to miss. Um, the fish the fish are still up the bay and they're on pogies, but they are moving out front. Um, I haven't fished up the bay in, in a few weeks now. And all the fish that we've been catching have pretty much been out front. There's so much going on. They're still chasing bait. So they haven't um, settled down and resided in the areas that they normally sit during the summer. Um, so sometimes you do have to kind of, you know, run around to try to find them because they're chasing that bait. Um, there's a lot of sand eels and smaller bait out front uh, is what they're working on. So sometimes it's hard uh, to match the hatch right there because, you know, the stuff there they're on is so small, but it is uh, very doable. There's tons of bluefish on the surface. Uh, sometimes it's actually hard to get away from them this time of year. Uh, but the good thing is, is they're big, just like they have been the last couple years. So they are super fun to catch. Still tons of big bass, uh, you know, on, on, on top, but we're getting a lot of them down below those, those big schools. Um, the fluke bite uh, is just starting. It's still a little early, but we have caught a few nice fluke inshore. Um, the sea bass bite is only open recreationally right now, so I haven't done a whole lot of that, but I do know there is a really good sea, bite, sea bass bite going on for recreational anglers. Um, and I know that there's been some good weak fish um, up the bay um, the last week. So pretty much status quo on what we usually see this time of year, but everything has been um, very, very, um, you know, happening. It's, it's going right now. So this is the time to get out there. Um, pretty much anywhere you go, you'll probably find some fish. I'm excited to see what this season has in store. Exiting the bay, um, out through the East Passage or the West Passage, there are lots of striped bass setting up on the reefs. I heard about some really nice fish taken from the kayaks, uh, off of Newport, off of Brenton Reef this week. Heard about some good fish around Kettle Bottom Rock. Heard about some good fish around the center wall in Point Judith. So these fish are staging up. A lot of them are going to head up into the bay. A lot of them are going to continue on toward the canal or other places. But uh, the, main th the main point I'm trying to make is that there are waves of striped bass mo moving through. I talked to my friend Tom who lives in Jersey. And they're still getting really big fish in New Jersey. So there are several waves of fish to come. And um, we are really taking full advantage of that in Rhode Island waters right now. Uh, switching gears over to sea bass, we're starting to hear more and more sea bass action now, but most of the guys that are bottom fishing are burning the fuel and heading out to Block Island. That's where the bottom fishing has been the best. That's where the best sea bass fishing has been. That's where the best uh, scup fishing has been. And that's definitely where the best fluke fishing has been throughout the entire region still. We're still not hearing anything from Nantucket Shoal. Um, so everyone's kind of focused on Block Island right now. Uh, moving back toward the mainland shoreline, um, Still, there are sea bass to be had in some of these inshore holes. You just got to do some, do some recon to find them. For a little bit more on what's happening in the Point Judith area and out of Black, let's toss it over now to Captain John Lee from JL Charters. Hey Dave, John Lee, JL Charters. Uh, I made this past week three Block Island trips. There's definitely fish around the island on all sides. You kind of got to hunt the birds down and um, We've got some good fish, fish to maybe 40 inches. We've gotten a handful of the new slots, um, a lot of blues. The bass and blues at the moment seem kind of separate, but that could change any day now. Um, definitely people try to get out the next few days. We got weather coming this weekend. The bite Friday, wherever you are, could be real good before the blow. Alrighty, thanks a lot. We'll see you next time. Have a good one. Now it's time for the Dream Boat Update. Derek Plummer is the new Weakfish leader with his 8.66 pounder weighed in at Bobby J's in Milford, Connecticut. Bobby Cifarelli built his lead score with an 8.47 pound tide runner, landing him in second place for the category. Joe Hernandez made his first ever Dream Boat entry and topped the Sea Robin board with his 3.34 pounder. Joe Kotak logged the first fluke of the 2023 contest and it was a good one at 7.1 pounds. Kyle Krauss lifted himself into second place overall with his 2.4 pound porgy. 
Charlie Pickus caught this fat bluefish that weighed in at 15.2 pounds, and that was good enough for second place in the category. The leaderboard now looks like this. Eddie Terrabile dropped from first to third, now with 14 points. Kyle Krauss clawed his way into second place with 15 points, and Bobby Seffarelli is our new leader with 19 points. The Dream Boat Fishing Challenge is the fisherman subscriber only multi species fishing competition with the chance to win a 21 foot Steigercraft Center console powered by a Yamaha. Along with many other great prizes, visit thefisherman.com to subscribe and get all the details so you can be part of the action. Heading out of Point Judith and taking a right to the west, heading down along South County. A lot of striped bass action along those beaches. Uh, the breach waves are putting out fish all week. I didn't hear about anything really big. Probably topping out in the high 30 inch range. Now, I wouldn't be surprised if there were a few larger fish taken, but that's the story that I've been hearing. The bigger fish have been on the reefs, kind of out past Watch Hill and heading toward Fisher's Island. Um, there's, a, there's a mix of sizes there. I've seen fish from like 34 inches up to 40 pounds taken out of that area. Um, a lot of top water action. And some guys doing some more damage at night on eels or like GT eels, big, big soft plastics are also getting it done. Um, also some big blue fish around the breach rays and some weak fish too up inside some of these ponds. So there's a lot of action going on in the South County area. Uh, everyone does seem to be hyper focused on striped bass and with the moon tides coming in this weekend and some snotty weather, I expect to see some bigger fish coming out of the breach rays this week. So if you're a surf guy and you don't mind waiting in line, it might be a good place to check out. Um, other than that, fluke fishing off of South County has still been pretty not so great. Um, we're hearing, you know, sporadic reports of good fishing. I think a lot of these guys are concentrating on bait rather than historically good spots. So if you motor around, find yourself a big pile of squid, fish under that pile of squid, you probably have a better chance of putting together a decent catch of fluke than you would if you just go fish places where you've done well in the past. Uh, not big numbers of fluke in the area yet, so if you can find the bait, they're going to be with that bait more than likely. And if they're not, just keep moving and find yourself another cloud of squid and uh, probably have a better shot of hooking up. Moving over into Connecticut, we're seeing kind of an interesting and, I think, clear pattern. And that concerns the race. Uh, for these last two moons in May, we have seen a strong push of striped bass move into the race right around the moon. And then as that tide starts to weaken, they clear out. That's what happened this past week. There were fish in the race, and then they cleared out with the weaker tides we had this week. Now we're coming back up to another moon. And, I mean, obviously it's no guarantee, but it's a pattern that, it's a clear pattern that we've been observing now for a month. And not enough has changed as far as water temperature goes or anything else for this pattern to change, in my opinion. So I think it's a pretty good bet that fishing in the race this weekend and throughout the early part of next week is going to be productive for striped bass. Um, on, while we're in that same area, getting out behind fishers, the fluke fishing really hasn't picked up there yet either. However, we are now starting to hear about more and more squid showing up there. And so just like we were talking about in South County, if you can get on top of some of those squid, you've got a much better chance of finding some fluke at Isabella or any of these other areas that put out fluke on the backside of the island. So keep that in mind. Uh, heading up into the Thames River, we are hearing about good porgy fishing up there. We're hearing about some good striped bass up there. Um, heard about stripers on top water plugs up to about 37 inches in there. And lots of porgy fishing happening at Fort Trumbull, at Avery Point, and then all those little reefs outside the river uh, are holding lots of bottom fish species, and in particular porgies. Um, in the Eastern Sound, people looking for sea bass are struggling a little bit, unless they cross over. Fish out by Montauk, that's where the action has been a lot better. Um, for the most part, the sea bass bite has been comprised of few bites and smaller fish. Uh, Bloody Grounds might be a good place to try, though, if you're determined to do it in Connecticut waters. Um, then, heading out toward the Niantic Bay, that's the one place in the eastern sound on the Connecticut side where you might have a shot at finding an inshore fluke. Um, you check Two Tree Channel, that seems to be like the historical place where they always seem to show uh, but inside Niantic Bay is one of these rare places, just some little anomaly that draws these fluke into it uh, where they're not really showing up in other places. So that's a place you can go if you don't want to burn too much gas and you want to try to catch a fluke. Heading out toward the Connecticut River, lots of striped bass action inside the river and outside the river. Inside the river, the fish have been on the, you know, we'll call them medium side. Uh, figure they're like 25 to 35 inches uh, for the most part. 
these fish are being caught in top water, being caught on soft plastics. When you get outside the river, you get on some of these reefs, there's a lot of butterfish showing up there. There's more bunker moving in now, and that's what's holding the bigger bass. They're out on these reefs right now. Some solid fish are being taken. For a little bit more on that, let's toss it over now to Mike Roy from Real Cash Charters. Hey guys, for this week's Fisher Report, uh, the striped bass season is really shaping up nicely. We've seen some really large fish starting to show up now. So there are uh, bigger fish showing up day by day. Uh, and then the bunker schools are still sparse, but that's the key. If you could find the bunker, you got a good chance at finding those big fish. Uh, still plenty of schoolies around. Eastern Long Island Sound reefs and rips are uh, still loaded with butterfish and juvenile sand eels. Uh, there's some really giant bluefish around as well, like some real gators. So hopefully we'll have a good bluefish run this year. Um, I think the uh, weak fish have thinned out. Uh, but this was uh, a really excellent, probably one of the best uh, weak fish runs we've seen um, in uh, quite a while. Uh, black sea bass fishing is starting to pick up now. The season is open. So uh, you got a bunch of options. So get out there and uh, get some fish. Now we'll just continue up the Connecticut River Valley, do a little uh, freshwater fishing with Rowan Lytle. Hey, everybody. Uh, so the big news of the last week or so, at least in my neck of the woods, uh, middle of the Connecticut River drainage, is fantastic bowfin fishing. Uh, they've wandered up onto the mud flats and they're really active, uh, very targetable on light spinning gear with artificials. It's a sight-based game. Uh, you can do it from shore in some places. Uh, kayaks, especially if you could stand on them, uh, and stand-up paddle boards are a great, uh, great way to go about it and get on those fish. Some very large females showing and some of the beautiful males. There's still some fish in spawning colors. Uh, they get bright emerald green fins. Uh, very, very different looking fish. Uh, beautiful eye spots on the tails. Uh, that's the way you can differentiate between the males and the females. Is uh, The males have a much, much more vibrant eye spot on their tail as well as right now that bright green coloration on their fins. Um, so if you want to get on some bowfin, I've been putting clients on them like crazy of late. Even on days we're out targeting other species, we're seeing and catching bowfin. Uh, and it's a lot of fun. They're fantastic uh, light tackle and fly rod fodder. Uh, so get out there on those warm sunny days and try and sight fish some bowfin and some other oddball species like that. Heading out of the Connecticut River, heading west. Um, that's another place where we're seeing more sea bass action. When you get to Southwest Reef, when you get to Six Mile, especially when you get out to the southern ends of those where the deep water is. Guys are finding a few more sea bass in that area, and the bite has been pretty decent. Uh, all along those reefs, you're going to find lots of porgies, and there's just more and more striped bass moving east from the western sound. A lot of these fish are big, and the further west you go, the better your chances are going to be. But you are going to find some good fish on those same reefs. Um, when, you get about, when you get to about Milford, um, that's where it really starts to pick up. Uh, we're seeing fish in the 20 to 40 pound range being taken there. Uh, a lot of guys are doing it with chunks. They're fishing that 50 line, doing it with chunks. But they're also getting them on spooks, like the dock or the splash walk. Um, guys are getting them on flutter spoons, definitely getting them on tube and worm. Uh, so that movement of fish is underway. And you're going to see these waves of fish now just running out through the sound. And just you're going to start seeing them showing up in a lot more places in that that, you know, that awesome striped bass fishery that always fires up in Long Island Sound is on its way to, uh, to being on full blast. When you get out to the Western Sound, that's where the action still is best. A lot of really big fish out there, a lot of bunker schools, a lot of big blue fish in the mix. Um, I'm not even going to go into detail on that. We're going to let Max talk about it. So uh, let's toss it over now to him, Max Finch from Fisherman's World. Hey everyone, Max here from Fisherman's World with another local fishing report. The striped bass fishing in our area remains excellent this past week leading up to the full moon. We've seen fish over 50 pounds locally and to our west. We got another big wave of fish coming through. I saw a really good bite off 32A, Greenwich, all the way down to Execution. Guys are diamond jigging Execution, trolling mojos, umbrellas, bunker spoons, you name it. Throwing docks around the bunker schools or wielding some big fish and also the flutter spoons. The flutter spoons has claimed a lot of big fish this year especially working our deep water structure. Our deep water reefs locally, like 28C and 11B, the OB and south of Green's Ledge has been holding a lot of big fish. And now that the bunker are really filling in, they're putting the feed bag on. So just look for it to get better all the way through June. It's one of the better seasons we've seen in a very long time. 
fluke fishing still remains a little slow. Guys are really weeding through some shorts to find their limits, but if you do want to give it a go, you know, can 26, 24, and then there's still guys shooting across the Sand City, Smithtown Bay, along the beaches, and then inside Ian's Neck. Porgies are flooded our area. Guys are getting from the beaches now. They're getting from the piers, you know, the mouth of the harbors, our deep water structure and our shallow water structure. They should just keep filling in as our water's warm. Sea bass, 32A is the hot spot and 28C along the Celtic wreck. You know, high low rigs, clam, squid, bucktail, they'll take jigs, you name it. Bluefish, oh my God, this week has been insane. And we've seen a lot of big blues move into our area. Monster gators up to like 17, 18 pounds. These things have been found harassing bunker schools in the mouths of our harbors, in our deep water. They're on our deep water structure, mixed in with the bass. Always a blast with the family. Thanks and good luck. That's what I have for you guys in the reports this week. Really should inspire you to get out there. Uh, lots of different species to be caught. You got that tournament in Buzzards Bay, you go out and catch some sea bass and maybe net yourself two grand. Um, on lots of big striped bass to be taken as well from the surf, from the kayak, from the boat. It's all happening. Uh, so definitely get out there, take some pictures. You might win something from me, send them in, and uh, yeah, we'll see what happens. But I think, uh, I think this moon and this snotty weather we got coming should shake things up, should move some fish around, should result in some great fishing. So... Uh, if you're not a subscriber to The Fisherman Magazine, I highly recommend you head over to our website. That's thefisherman.com. There's enough free content on there to give you a full taste of what we cover. We cover everything from Delaware to Maine and all the species you can think of in that range from sheep's head to striped bass, from steelhead to bluefish. It's all covered. Um, and we do it every way you can do it, from the surf, from the shore, from the kayak, inshore boating, offshore. Stand up paddleboard, it's all covered in the magazine. You just gotta head over to the website, and check us out. It's the best 30 bucks you can spend in fishing. You get 12 issues sent to your house, you get 26 digital issues sent to your email box during the season. You get access to all three editions that's New Jersey, Long Island, and New England. And you get access, <coughs> and you get access, excuse me, to all those reports. Uh, so definitely head over to the website, check that out. If you're still not convinced, at the very least, give us a like and subscribe here on YouTube and hit that little bell thing down there so you get a notification every time we post something new. Appreciate you guys for watching, and we'll see you next week.